Well, today we highlight the AAN's commitment to neuroscience research with a discussion on the rise of neurotech. And we are asking the question, is it possible to restore mobility and communication for patients with the use of an implantable computer brain interface? This is pretty exciting. And joining me here in studio now is Dr. Lee Hockberg, who is leading the clinical trial that is already doing so. Thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for your interest in brain computer interfaces. This is so fascinating. I want to start off with what are the identifying factors of patients and injuries that would qualify for this technology? So when I think about brain computer interfaces broadly, the first thought is really with the patients. If we think about people who have had cervical spinal cord injury or people who have ALS or people who have different kinds of stroke, one really kind of simple way to think about those very different diseases or injuries is that there's been a disconnection. There's been a disconnection between different parts of the nervous system that otherwise are still working. And if we can find a way to either reconnect those different parts of the nervous system, or if we can restore the function that's been lost by those disconnections, then we have a technology that could really help to not only restore function, but to restore quality of life for people with any number of neurologic diseases. And being a part of brain gain, tell me more, elaborate on this implantable device. As a result of what really was decades of fundamental neuroscience research, as a field, we began to understand how we could record from different parts of the brain and to understand what ensembles of individual neurons were doing as, for example, somebody thought or attempted to move their own hand. For example, somebody who's able-bodied moves their right hand. We know that in the contralateral and the left motor cortex, there's a whole bunch of neurons that are firing away that are providing the commands for that hand to move. So what are some of the outcomes that you're seeing so far? So as a result of those decades of fundamental investment in neuroscience, we began our brain gate clinical trials 20 years ago. And people with cervical spinal cord injury, with brainstem stroke, and with ALS, just amazing people have joined us in these trials. And for example, we've had folks who are unable to move their hand, who have controlled a cursor on a computer screen, who have been able to control a tablet computer, not an assistive technology, but the same communication technology that they might have used before the onset of their injury or illness. We've been able to connect this investigational brain gate system to stimulating electrodes known as functional electrical stimulation electrodes in the arm, allowing somebody who is unable to move his own arm to open and close his hand and to flex and extend his elbow. What's the future hold for neurotechnology? Where do you see this from now, the development, 10 years ahead? So, I'm an academic researcher, and I know what academic research does well, which is to show what's possible, particularly as we're developing medical devices, to take something that once in many ways was science fiction, to turn it into science, to show what could happen next, to push the boundaries in that science as far as it can be pushed. Exciting to see you. Thank you so much for being here and just letting us know what's going on in the world. Very exciting stuff. It's my pleasure. Thanks so much for your interest.